What's up you guys, Rex here. And we just got a short video today where I'll be going over all of the courses I took while I was an undergrad to prepare myself for medical school. And also I'll be revealing to you my GPA that helped me get four acceptances to medical school. <music> Okay, so I will be going from my direct AMCAS report that I submitted to medical schools. So this is what medical schools saw. And so I did have quite a bit of AP credits. So if you go down, and so I've highlighted all of the classes that were specifically pre-med classes. All of the other classes are generally gen eds or for my major, which was biomedical engineering. So from AP, I got Bio 101, Bio 101 Lab. Um, and then these two seminar things that I don't know what they are, but these, those were from AP credit. Um, and so keep going down. And so then also physics 104, that was AP credit. This says AP credit for chem 101 lab. That wasn't true. I did this thing where I was able to just test out of it because they like enrolled too many people in the 101 lab, even though I had never taken AP chemistry and never taken a chem lab. So I just sort of got lucky that I was able to do that. Um, and so then red lines are just dividing by semesters. And so since I came in with a good amount of credits, and then also because I was doing a sport at the time, I didn't want to take too many classes in a semester. I only ever, besides like one semester, took four classes within a semester. That's not including labs. At many times I was taking also like four labs with my four classes. So it was still significant. Um, but then I also took some summer school classes at UNC where I did my undergrad because I had to be there over the summer anyways. And we were just, you know, I was doing internships, working out for wrestling. So I was, might as well take classes. And that helped me get through all of my pre-med classes by the fall semester of my junior year in time to get to medical school without having to take a gap year. So continuing on, I took Chem 101, Physics 118, Chem 102. So I took my Gen Chems right there and there. And then I took General Physics as well. Um, I just took my lab separately because I wanted to take it over the summer just because it was a lot less work. Labs are tough. Um, Chem, one, Chem 241 is sort of an interesting class at UNC. We don't have a lab for Orgo 1, and so since a lot of medical schools require that, we have this sort of in its place whole class, which is just a two credit hour class, which is weird, and then it also has a lab. I took the lab later on. Um, the following spring, it looks like. The following spring, I actually took the lab. So I also did take genetics. I highly recommend taking genetics. I think it is a worthwhile class to take, um, although it's not required by all medical schools. I think it helps with the MCAT. And it's just good to know. Orgo 1, Psych 101. I did take Psych 101. I didn't take Soch 101. Um, this isn't strictly a pre-med class. I took Global Health. I did think that came in handy with sort of just learning about what it means to be a doctor in different contexts. And that did help me with my essay writing more than anything. So I would recommend taking some sort of class that's like a global health or histories of health or something like that. Um, Orgo 2, there's that weird lab. Chem 262, that's Orgo 2 lab. Took that over the summer. Um, anatomy and physiology, definitely a, uh, a must take class. So much of the MCAT covers that. And also that's like the quintessential doctor class of like you have to know the human body and so that was like one of the cooler classes i took and highly recommend it that if that's not interesting to you you might want to depending on what profession you want to go into within medicine you might want to reconsider your career not not really it's okay if you dislike a and p um this class was a special topics class that was actually a statistics course so that was stats um so that i also would consider a pre-med class I took biochem then in fall semester of my junior year. And so I was all done with all of the traditional pre-med classes. I'm also throwing in this class, which was actually like a physiology, um, a little bit of anatomy, but more of a physiology class and actually definitely learned a lot of stuff I didn't learn in my normal anatomy and physiology class because we had to skip several organ systems or just like cover them online because we missed a ton of class that semester from like hurricanes and water crises and all kinds of fun stuff that was going on in the semester. That was a heck of a semester. That was, that semester was a mess, but we made it through. Um, and so yeah, so that's, those are the classes I took. I thought I was very well prepared for the MCAT, so that helped immensely on my studying. And so yeah, there's my GPA, which, yeah, um, I'll say a little bit about that. I didn't really set out to get a 4.0. I don't think that should necessarily ever be a goal to, to get a 4.0 as, as far as like 
depending on what you're doing in your classes, the amount of effort it might take to go from like a 3.9 to a 4.0 may be immense. And I'm not gonna say or pretend that I'm not really thankful to get a 4.0 and I don't think that helped me immensely in my medical school journey. I think that was a huge factor in my success. Stats do matter for medical school as far as getting in, but especially for getting scholarships and stuff like that and getting into top schools. That being said, GPAs and everything, similar to what my view on the MCAT is, that it doesn't tell you if you're gonna be a doctor or not, it just tells you where you might become a doctor at. So if you have a GPA of like a 3.5, apply to medical schools that have an average around a 3.5. If you have a GPA that's like a 2.7, that means you might be taking some post back classes or have to get a master's degree first. That doesn't mean you can't be a doctor. It just means your journey might look different than mine where I got a 4.0. That's what it is. Um, but I also want to say with that, that like there's, there is a little bit of luck that went into me getting a 4.0 as far as that like it wasn't something that was my goal. I was just taking classes to take classes and, and wasn't too obsessed with grades by any mean. And so like a good example of that, that the worst class I ever did in was biology 252. So that was anatomy and physiology, which that was a class I really enjoyed and I learned a ton in it. And I really just sort of was focused more on learning and not really caring about testing. And so we had like three exams and I got into the habit of sort of where I do well on the first exam and study progressively less and less. And so like the first exam, I looked at stuff like two days before and I got like a 92 on it. And so then the next exam I was complacent and I just looked at things for like an hour the night before and I think I got a 96 on it. And so these were like 40 question multiple choice exams. So then by the time the third exam rolled around, I think I just like studied morning of for 30 minutes or something like that. And I ended up getting like an 87.5 on that. So I missed like five out of the 40 questions. And some of them were just different difficultly worded toss ups. And so the final exam came around and I was like pretty lazy on that too. And it was also like a 40 question exam. And so I ended up getting my grade back and I got an A in the class. But then I went and looked at my final exam grade and I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was something that did not make sense based on the, the amount of questions. So I got like an 80 6.5 or something like that when that shouldn't have been a possibility if it was a multiple choice exam with 40 questions or whatever and so i looked and i saw that like in order to get an a i need like a 92.5 and i got like a 92.6 or something like that so i just barely got an a and then the professor sent out an email saying he actually went back and gave partial credit on this multiple choice exam for a couple of the questions and so that explained why i had this weird percentage that i did go back and get some partial credit on this one final final exam question. And if he hadn't, he being the professor, hadn't made the decision to go back and regrade the exams and give partial credit, which like, I don't know if I necessarily agree with giving, giving the partial credit, but I think that was a fair thing to do because there's a lot of 50-50 questions he asked. I don't know what they were in hindsight, what he changed. Um, but yeah, so if he hadn't done that, I would have gotten an A minus and then I wouldn't have a 4.0. And it's like, I don't think that would have made any difference in my life of, of anything other than me being able to say I got a 4.0, which is something like after this, hopefully this is the last time in my life I have to bring up getting a 4.0. I don't think anyone cares that much. I don't care that much. People are just going to look at me and see that I got a medical degree. And eventually people are just going to look at me and see that I graduated from residency. It's not gonna matter in the long run. Grades don't matter too much. Um, but I digress. I was talking about classes. So those are the classes I took. Um, next Wednesday, I'm actually gonna do a video on my top 10 pre-med classes that I would recommend and rank them in order of importance, in my opinion. So make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications if you're interested in seeing that. As always, like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video. Any questions, comments, or concerns, I'd love to hear them. I'll read and respond to every single comment. And until next time, don't be ordinary, go be great.